I'm the Painting Coach and this is a War Games Delivered Painting Tutorial for Bolt Action Band of Brothers. I'll be showing you how to paint a late war US airborne soldier using the War Games Delivered Mega Paint Set. So sit back and get ready to follow along. So we'll start this uh, Lieutenant for the US airborne and I've sprayed him, I've primed him with army green and that gives us a nice head start. So the first thing we want to do is, is paint all the webbing. We'll shade the webbing and the, the uniform at the same time. And we're going to use scaly hide for this. So just thin it with a little bit of water and just paint it down over all the webbing, uh, the bits of ammo, pouches. Just take your time. Now, going over the green, you may be fortunate and you may have a a good coverage so you may only need one coat I'm probably going to need two just to cover all this off into the backpack as well so you can see there it's covering okay but it does need a little bit more so I'm just going to paint all the backpack with this as well the belt any other bits of webbing that you've got and we'll come back and have a look at the model and assess what we're going to do next Probably do the gaiters on the legs next. And then once that's all done, we'll uh, have a look at shading most of the uh, most of the uh, uniform. Once we're happy that we've got everything, we're going to use some military shader just to paint over all of those areas. Now, the key to getting this to look good off the bat like this is to make sure that you haven't got too much on your brush, and you don't flood the model with it. So we're just going to paint it in to all these areas and you'll see it'll start to to tone and tint everything. And that's important because that, that starts to give us the, the definition. So paint over all the uniform um, and all the webbing that we've just done. Trying not to let this pool too heavily in the recesses so it's quite subtle and then when we come back we'll start highlighting these two areas before we move on to some of the others. With a military shader dry it's, it's still looking a little dark so what we want to do is just go back in and highlight to brighten up some of those areas. So starting off with the scaly hide we're going to highlight up all the webbing and in terms of what we're looking to do we're just looking to catch those bits that are most raised and in some places you'll be able to use the shape of the model uh, to pull your brush along but really what we're looking to do is just accentuate some of these colors and you can see that's starting to come through on the video so just work your way around fairly big highlights where they're where they're warranted like I said just leaving that shade in the recesses and you get a nice nice effect there on the pack so get that done we'll put another highlight on and we'll do that next for the for all of the webbing and then we'll highlight the uniform the next highlight we're going to use is necrotic flesh and this is a, a lot brighter so again we're just looking for those parts of the model which are most raised nice and simple just working that highlight on and, and as you build the highlights up you're going to use less and less paint each time you can see that I've got a really good tip on the brush as well so if you're not sure how to get a good tip on the brush as you put it in the paint twist it and drag it out of the paint and then you'll get a nice point on it and then you just want to touch it a little bit against a paper towel to take off any excess uh, paint or water uh, and that'll give you that. So like I said, it's a lot brighter. So work your way around the model, just focusing on the most raised areas. And then once that's finished, we'll come back and we'll have a look at doing the actual uniform. And one of the challenges we have with the uniform is to keep the colour differentiation that we've got between the webbing, which is the lighter colour, uh, and the green there. So we'll, we'll work on that next. The first highlight we're going to put on the armour is with army green. Now, of course, these... Uh, 
paints are one to one match to the to the color primer which is why I used it because it does give us a nice head start now as you add this army green on over the military shader we're just looking for those folds the kind of the raised folds just leaving the military shader in those darkest recesses now this is one just take your time work your way around the model this is going to be quite subtle because there's because we didn't flood the model with shade there's not a huge difference in terms of um, the two greens with that with that military shader on this so just work your way around taking your time and you can see there we're just building up a real subtle green so I'm happy with that and we'll come back with a highlight next I'm gonna highlight the uniform with some moldy green now this is quite a a bright green but what you'll find is that once it dries it blends down into the army green underneath so we're going to use this fairly sparingly I haven't got too much on my brush got a good tip on the brush as well I'm just going to paint this along those areas that have got the, the highest folds and what we'll start to see is that we'll just start to see the uniform breaking up a bit which which is good and of course on the tabletop uh, it'll add a little bit of visual interest we just want to use this fairly sparingly because it's always easy to go and add more on it's always more difficult to take it away if we've uh, if we've been a bit overzealous with how we've applied it so just pop it on and then once that's finished we'll come back that's the uniform done and we'll we'll do the boots the helmet and the thompson machine gun next because uh, we're going to use the same shade, so we'll base coat them all first, and then we'll come back to highlight. So we'll paint the helmet first, which is a darker green, so we're going to base it with uh, Angel's Green. Now, just one thing to note is that darker colours don't tend to cover very well over lighter colours, so this will need two coats, just take your time with it. Build up a nice, solid Angel Green coat. We're not going to shade it yet because we're going to shade it alongside all the other things. Just let it dry, pop that second coat on, and then we'll come back and we'll do the boots next. So paint the gaiters first, and the colour we're going to use for this is fur brown. So it doesn't matter if you spill onto the boots, but do just take care not to spill onto the green uniform we've already finished. So we just work our way around, get the nice even coverage on there. And then once that's done, obviously make sure we do both of them. We'll do the boot, the sorry, the the boots next, the jump boots, and of course the uh, Thompson casing as well. So next up, we're going to paint the boots with oak brown. And like you say, you've got the same issue here. We're using a much darker colour or a slightly lighter colour in that it doesn't cover very well. So just build that coverage up and it's just a, a nice to have the variation between the different browns on there and the other thing we're going to do is while we've got it out is we're going to paint the wooden parts of the Thompson machine gun as well and we'll paint the strap too so if you're not sure which bits to paint, I mean, I just Googled a picture of a World War II Thompson submachine gun and it showed me where the wood was, showed me where the metallics are. I've just followed that for, for these sections. So get that done, get that uh, coverage nice and even all the way across. Um, and we'll paint the metallics next before we shade all of those areas we've just painted together. For the metallics, the colour we're going to use is gunmetal. Now you don't want a huge amount on your brush. You do just want to be careful around areas you've already finished. So again, if you're not sure which bits uh, are going to be silver, just check either the box art or check online to see how other artists have kind of done this so I'm going to paint all of the weapon and if you feel up for it you can paint any buckles on the belts or backpacks that you think might uh, might benefit from being silver so that's entirely optional though it's up to you if you feel that 
uh, you can do it otherwise we'll just get this coated and then we'll come back and uh, we're gonna wash all of those areas we've just painted with all those areas dry we're gonna shade them and the color we're gonna use for this is strong tone which is a, a black wash and we're gonna just paint this over everything again taking our time we don't want to smother the model or have it pool everywhere because we're looking for subtle shading that's going to help us with our highlights so we're essentially doing all the boots with the gaiters we're doing all of the weapon and all metallic so we've got the thompson here Taking our time when we get to areas we've already finished. I'm using this quite heavily on the Thompson because the, the metallic parts tended to be quite dark. And we're also going to pop it on the helmet here as well. So when you've got a fairly large area like this, it can be in danger of pooling. So you just want to keep it moving around so that doesn't happen. So get all that done and then we'll come back and start the highlighting. This highlight will be on the boots and that leather strap and the colour we're going to use this is leather brown so we just want to catch some of those sharp raised edges uh, on the boot. So anything obviously that's in the shadow we don't need to worry about too much. So just work it around like that. And then for the leather strap we're just going to off the tip of the brush and run it along the edge just to give us a nice crisp highlight nice and easy so do that over all the leather bits and we'll do the gaiters and the thompson next for the gaiters and the thompson we're going to go back to fur brown and we're just going to put a little highlight in around those parts which are kind of in the light and obviously these little bits of leather in there which pull tight nice and simple and then for the Thompson it's kind of a ready brown so we're going to use the the fur color on there as well so just go around if you need to we can tidy that up nice and simply there we are that's a nice easy little bit of highlight in there we'll do the uh, silver next and then we've just got the flesh to do and base the model and it's done. For the silver, I'm going to go back to gunmetal. Just paint this along those edges. We could use a brighter silver if we wanted. And of course, these are your models. So if you want to add a brighter silver, feel free. I just want to keep it fairly muted. Uh, in keeping with the fact that the paratroopers would have been a special force. And wouldn't want any lights gleaming off their weapons so that's all the uniform done like i said we've just got the oh we've got the helmet to do we'll do the helmet next then we'll do the flash um we probably need to use some anti-shine just on some areas and apart from that we just have the basing and we're done for the helmet we want to give it a little bit of a worn look so very simply all we're going to do is just take some crypt wraith and just dot this around the helmet this will kind of help add spots of interest. When we put some anti-shine varnish on it later, it'll all blend down really nicely. So get that done. And then we'll uh, do the flesh next. The last bit of colour we've got to do is the flesh before we mat down the model a little bit and also have a think about the base. So the colour we're going to use to base the flesh uh, is Barbarian Flesh. Now what you'll find is that this won't cover fantastically, it'll do okay, but you will need another coat of it. Just paint it on, being careful not to get it on any of the areas that you've already finished. So we've got the hand, the face, etc. Just take your time, spread that paint out so that uh, it doesn't obscure any detail. And then add a second coat once this one is dry. And when we've done that, we'll come back and shade it and then start highlighting. When that barbarian flesh is dry, we're then going to shade it with a little bit of flesh wash. Or flesh tone wash, I should say. And really, we're doing this exactly the same way that, as we did all of the uh, other washes. Well, we want to shade into those recesses. 
uh, but we don't want to flood the model too much and have too much pool. One thing that's important to do when you are shading is to make sure that it doesn't dry and that you do whole sections first so that way it keeps the keeps the area looking all the same colour whereas if you let it dry and then go back to it you're going to have tide marks uh, which are not ideal so we'll let that dry fully and we'll come back and highlight the flesh and then we're pretty much done on the colours so like I said we'll pop some anti-shine varnish on it and we'll base it and we're done when that flesh wash is dry we're going to go back to Barbarian Flesh just to highlight the most raised areas so we've got the nose and kind of around the mouth cheekbone area and this is really easy to do on the fingers because you can just use the shape of the brush to just move it along and get a nice highlight in there like that so get all of that done and then we'll add a final highlight just to make the flesh jump out a little bit more uh, and then we'll we'll paint the rim anti-shine we put anti-shine on the rim as well just to give it a little bit of protection and then we'll base it so the last colour I'm going to use on the flesh is going to be Corpse Pale, which is very bright uh, in comparison to what's underneath, so we're just going to use it fairly sparingly. And just on the bits, so if you remember, the helmet's going to put a lot of that face in shadow, so we just want to use it on the most exposed areas. Things like the knuckles, and um, pulling it along. The fingers, just like that, using the tip of your brush. And the hand, so it's nice and easy, just adds that little bit of uh, brighter flesh tone to the model which just will help it stand out on the tabletop obviously you're going to be standing a fair way away from it when you're playing so that's done we'll do the base rim next I'm going to go for a, a brown base rim so I'm just picking there the brown now you can see it's not covering fantastically well I have thinned it down with some water because I don't want it to be too thick so I'm just going to build this up gradually with two or three coats and if you're painting lots of these all at once then that's really easy because by the time you've painted maybe ten uh, you'll have got back to the first one it'll be dry and just rotate through nice and quickly so I'm going to do that let it all dry we'll do some anti-shine next and then lastly uh, we'll base it and you can base it how you want I'm just going to show you a, an example of how you might go ahead uh, go about doing it so using the anti-shine matte varnish I'm using the the pot version uh, essentially what we want to do is just paint it over all of the model now as has been the theme all the way through let's make sure that we don't put too much on so only have a little bit on your brush and make sure you work it around the model as well so that it doesn't pool you don't get it too thick because if it is too thick and it may dry too thick then that can leave a little bit of shine so nice and easy just working it around the paint over the weapon as well so there we are paint all of the model with the anti shine let it dry properly I'm going to paint the rim of the base as well just to add a little uh, a little bit of protection to it because uh, obviously as we move around it's gonna scuff on the bottom of things and when that's done um, we'll base it. First thing we want to do is take some PVA glue and we're going to fill this part of the base just taking our time running it up to the feet uh, and make sure we don't spill it anywhere. So just fill all that with the PVA and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to dip it into some mixed flock to get a nice effect. So I've got some mixed flock here and all I'm going to do is take my model Rub the base in and then tap it off. I run my thumb around and there we go. That's the model base. We'll have a look at it on the turntable next. There we go. This US Airborne Soldier is done and ready for the Bolt Action Battlefield. Make sure you check out our other tutorials so you know how to paint the whole box and you also have options for painting different eras as well. We're also giving away one Band of Brothers set to a lucky winner. You have just two days from the release of this video to enter, so make sure you do so using the link in the description. Don't forget to check our War Games Delivered for all your wargaming, paint and hobby supply needs. Our link is below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.